we can have a lot more fun with GPT than just building another chatbot. So we're gonna build a Star Wars trivia game where we're automatically going to generate all the questions using GPT. And this isn't just asking for those questions in the chat UI, we're gonna programmatically generate all these questions, including asking for a JSON response in the OpenAI SDK, and then load those questions up inside of an XJS app so we can make sure we know who actually knows the most Star Wars trivia. Hey team, I'm Colby Fayok. I make weekly web dev tutorials helping you to solve real problems with the tools of the web. And today we're celebrating May the 4th by building a Star Wars trivia app powered by GPT. Now digging in, I built a simple starter in Next.js to give us some UI to work with so we can focus on getting the data into our app. If you wanna follow along, this starter's on my GitHub. You can find the link inside the description. So taking a quick look inside of the code, we have some state set up, which is going to just really store the values of which question we're looking at, setting the score, we're going to have a little function to start over the game. And then inside the UI itself, we're using Tailwind and just some React components in order to actually display what's on the page for each of those questions. We're making sure that when somebody selects one of those questions, we're making sure it is the right answer and we're handling the state uh, for whether it's right or for wrong. And then finally, at the end, inside of get server side props, we're currently setting up some static questions just to kind of put in some placeholder content for when you start up the demo starter. But then we're also shuffling the uh, answers so to make sure that there's a little variety in how they're displayed. Now, ultimately, our goal here will be to update this questions array into the data that we generated from ChatGPT. Well, ultimately, we're going to programmatically generate these questions. It doesn't hurt to start off inside of the chat UI itself in order to start working with that prompt and massaging it and engineering it so that it can give you the information that you want. So for instance, if I start off by saying, generate 10 trivia questions for Star Wars, it gave me a nice 10 questions for my trivia, but I wanna also make sure I have the answers. So I'm gonna paste back in that prompt and I'm gonna say, with answers, and this also worked out really well, but I also wanna have wrong answers. If we look at the app, we're doing multiple choice, not text input, so we wanna make sure we have wrong answers. So I'm gonna say, include wrong answers. And as we can see, it's slowly building out our questions and answers. But as we can see, it's giving us only two incorrect answers, where we have slots for four total answers. So I'm gonna also make sure that I specify include three wrong answers. But ultimately, we are currently seeing this given back to us in a text-based response. Now, technically, I can copy all this into my text editor. I can multi-select and change this all into JSON, but we're gonna be requesting this programmatically. So there's not gonna be a middle step here where I'm gonna to wanna to correct the actual response inside of my application. So at the end of my prompt, I'm also gonna say format the response as JSON. And as we can see, that worked out pretty well where we have our array of objects, where we have our question, our correct answer, and even our three incorrect answers. But one thing we need to be careful of is the actual format of this response, where we have question, correct underscore answer, incorrect underscore answers. We wanna make sure that we're always going to expect the same format because between the different responses, we might get different keys and we might get different shapes for how this data is actually uh, provided to us. So not only am I going to say format the response as JSON, I'm going to also say in the shape of, and I created the simple array with an object inside, which I can use in order to tell ChatGPT exactly what shape I want my data to be in. So I'm going to paste that inside of the prompt. And once I generate that, and we can now see that even if this syntax highlighting looks a little bit off, it's giving the exact format that we want, including that question, answer, and the wrong answer specified in camel case. So I think this is good for now. We can now start to move this to programmatically generate this inside of our actual application. Now we have a few options for how we do this, where we can run this inside of get server side props, but that's gonna make the page take a long time to load if we're trying to generate that every single time the page loads. We can also do an API route where maybe somebody clicks generate on the actual application so that it generates it on the fly. And then once they're done waiting, it's going to actually give them the, the game that they can start off with. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just create a node script so that we can run it once. It's gonna generate all of our questions that way it's nice and consistent. We can refresh that anytime we want. And if we even want to move it into an API where once they get through it, they can generate another set of questions, we have that flexibility. So inside of the root of my project, I created a new directory called scripts and inside a file called generate questions. And here we're ultimately going to run a function that's going to use the OpenAI SDK in order to send that prompt that we've been crafting to their SDK and programmatically return the response. 
If we head over to the OpenAI documentation, particularly the API reference, what we're going to do is create a chat completion, where if we look inside of the sample request here, it might default to curl, but we can select Python or Node, whatever language you're using out of that. But what we can do is ultimately copy this snippet and paste it right inside of our application. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in at the top of my file, and we're just going to have to do a little bit of rearranging where I'm going to have the actual completion code run inside of my asynchronous function to make sure we have that async await syntax. Now, because we're using the OpenAI SDK, we want to make sure we also NPM install OpenAI. Now, as part of this configuration, we need to also set up our OpenAI API key. So inside of the root of the project, you can create a .env.local where we can set up that OpenAI API key. Or if you head into the dashboard, if you click on this little personal or maybe it's the business name, we can go here and we can actually view our API keys. Where at this point, we're going to want to create a new secret key. And let's call this my Star Wars Trivia. And once we have that key, we have that value that we're going to be able to copy and paste in our application. And the only problem now is by default, we're not going to be able to have access to that environment variable that we set up in .env local. So what we're going to do is use a package called .env in order to configure that. So inside of my terminal, I'm going to run npm install .env. And back at the top of my script, I'm going to run require .env. And we're going to run the config method where inside we're going to pass in a path and we're going to have it set to go to that .env.local. Now, if you're using just .env, this will automatically pick it up. But because we're using that .local convention, we need to actually specify that path. But now let's just use this example code that comes with that snippet just to test that it's working. If I now run node scripts generate questions, we can see it'll take a second. But ultimately, it returned a response answering my question of hello world. Now, we don't want to just say hello world. We want to actually ask for our trivia questions. So I'm going to reformat this content here where inside we're going to paste in our prompt just like we did inside of ChatGPT itself. And just to make it easier in case we ever want to change the shape, I can actually just add a variable of shape and define this at the top. So I'm going to say constant shape equals that array of data. But now if I run that script again, well, it's a little bit hard to read because of the formatting of it. We can see that we have our content as a beautiful JSON array. So let's try to parse this. So let's say constant questions is equal to json.parse, and I'm going to pass in that message. Or if you remember, that message has a role of assistant and content, so we want to also make sure we're specifying that content. And then I want to also actually log out those questions. So I'm going to log out questions. And if I run it again, we can see that we do get a nice set of data that we were able to parse correctly from JSON, but we notice that I'm actually missing something here. I'm not getting the right shape. And I realized that inside of here, I never actually ran json.stringify on my shape. So it's probably just showing up as object object. But once I fix that, we can see that I now get the correct format for all those questions. So we have our JSON. Let's actually do something with it. Where now we're going to actually write this to a file that we can pick up inside of the application. So inside of my source directory, I'm going to create a new uh, directory called data. And inside here, we're going to dump in that JSON file. Now to work with the file system, I'm going to create a new constant of FS. And I'm going to require FS. And I'm going to use the promises module of FS. So I can now run await fs.write file. I'm going to specify the path and let's set that to data. And let's say questions.json. And then I'm going to pass in the data that I'm going to json.stringify my questions. And you might be asking why we're going to actually parse and then stringify it. This is also a, ni a nice little error catching where you could probably add some error handling in here. But if it doesn't return it as actual proper JSON, this is going to break. So we know that something's wrong. But we can pass back in those questions with stringify it. And I like to make it look a little bit pretty just so that I can have an easier time reading those questions inside the file itself. But this time when I run the script again, I actually got an error. I specified the wrong directory. We want to make sure that source data questions once I get that response, we can now see that inside of that data directory, I have questions.json, including all of that beautiful question data that I can now serve inside of my application. So heading back into my application, I'm going to now import my questions, or I'm going to rename that to trivia questions because I have my prop of questions already. I'm going to say that's from at data questions.json, where now I'm going to take those trivia questions, head to the very bottom inside of get server side props, and I'm going to replace that static array. And now when I refresh the page, we can see that we are already starting to see those questions in there. Where, where, what planet is Luke Skywalker from? I think he's from Tatooine. And I got that right. Who's Han Solo's best friend and co-pilot? Of course, it's Chewie. And we can probably do some extra prompt engineering on this, such as maybe we want short, concise answers instead of long ones like this. But either way, we're able to see that we're able to now have all these different questions and answers that we can use for our trivia game. 
Now, like I mentioned before, we can really run this code wherever we want, where if we want to dump this into a serverless function and run this on the fly, or if you want to use a Bercel's new edge runtime where you would have to actually hit the open API director directly instead of an SDK, you can certainly do that so that you can generate it via an API request rather than having to run this script. Or maybe you run a GitHub action that runs this daily so that every day you get a new set of questions. But the cool thing is now that we have this prompt, we can engineer it to really whatever we want, whether it's Star Wars or maybe shh, maybe we do Star Trek or really whatever kind of trivia we want to create. GPT has a lot of practical use cases, but it also has some fun use cases like creating a trivia game. If you want to learn more about interacting with the OpenAI SDK, head over to egghead.io where I have a course on how you can get started with the OpenAI SDK beyond chat completions like we covered today. Or if you want to just have another fun use case, check out my video where we create a custom Pokemon card using ChatGPT and Dali. May the fourth be with you all. And if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.